Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and uh, if you're a Windows Phone fan like I am, but you still use a lot of Google services like Google Voice, then uh, you're probably aware that services like MetroTalk, third-party Google Voice clients, are going to be discontinued uh, in about a week from the time this video was shot, around May 15th. Now, Google might give us some stay of execution, but we already need to be examining you know, solutions to make sure that we can still get our phone calls and our text messages and to be able to communicate with people. And while I think it'll be cool for the Android ecosystem to roll Google Voice into the Hangouts app, it's still a bummer for us Windows Phone fans because we don't have a Hangouts app solution. So this won't be as much of a pro tip as it will be an explanation of the process, all the hoops I'm gonna have to jump through just to continue using Google Voice on my Windows phones. So this is my Lumia 1020, and this actually has my personal SIM card in it. This is a 1520, and this is what I'm gonna be doing the demonstration on because it's just got a bigger screen. Then we have the Lumia icon over here to uh, receive calls so I can show you what all of this is gonna look like. Now, thankfully, those of you who are rocking Windows Phone 8.1, uh, you'll hopefully have noticed by now that the Internet Explorer browser on Windows Phone is much improved. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is pin Google Voice to our home screens. And unfortunately, we get this really ugly browser bookmark, but that's kind of what it's going to take. I wish we could throw on more of a logo, like if I long pressed on this and then said, hey, replace this with an image of Google Voice but alas, it's not meant to be. And another bummer is every time we open Google Voice, it's gonna have to load just like any other web page, even though it's a shortcut. But we do have a pretty good web style view. This is the same view that you would see, obviously, if you logged into Google Voice from your computer or your desktop or your laptop. When we get into settings, we can see all of the phone numbers that are attached to this account. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the phone's natural text messaging app and phone app as sort of a notification system. And then we're gonna be using the website to actually initiate initiate calls and to send text messages back out. And that's kind of a bummer, but that's really going to be the most consistent way that I found to continue using Google Voice. So what we're going to do, this is my Lumia 1020, and I want to make sure that it gets text, so I'm going to say receive text messages. So now it's done that, and I can zoom back out and go back to my inbox. So now, whenever someone calls my Google Voice number, it's still gonna ring all of the phones that I've got associated with that account just like it normally does, so I can answer phone calls just fine. But when I get a text message, it's going to send an alert to my messaging app, and I can read it from my messaging app, but what I'm really gonna wanna do is to go back in to the Google Voice website and uh, reply to the text from there if I want it to show up as my Google Voice number. And that's a bummer. It's not a very convenient way to continue using Google Voice, and it would really be preferable if we had a standalone Google Voice app, or if Google would allow us to continue using third-party apps. Thankfully, the web interface is much more responsive on the Windows Phone 8.1 update, and as you start typing into the To field, it will start pulling your Google uh, Contacts list so that you don't have to memorize everybody's phone numbers. It will uh, automatically populate with, uh, with the names in your contact list. But you know we can do a hello world, and then we should see that send down to this phone right here after I hit send. and the text is received. There's a little bit more of a lag sending it uh, over data as opposed to an over the air text, but you know, the, the message was still sent fairly quickly. And calls are gonna function in a very similar way, only now we're gonna be using Google's ringback service. So instead of going to the dialer and dialing a whole bunch of numbers and then having to memorize someone else's phone number so that you can dial out through Google Voice, we're just gonna hit this call button and then within this call button, we can select what phone we want Google to use for the Google Voice call. So we can use uh, Google Talk, but I'm going to use my Lumia 1020. So it's going to send the call to my 1020 first, and then when I answer from the 1020, it'll then initiate a call to the receiver phone, which is uh, my Lumia icon here. And as you can see, it populated that list, but I had to kind of blur it out there. I uh, just I don't want uh, all that personal information out on the interwebs. So now uh, I'm going to hit connect. This is going to send a signal up to Google, and Google's going to ring my Lumia 1020, and then when I answer from the 1020, it's going to send the call to the icon. And we can hear it's now dialing that out. I threw that on speaker. And now we have the icon uh, receiving the call. 
So I'm going to go ahead and end that. And, and we're going to ignore that too. And you might be asking why I don't go through the mobile version of Google Voice uh, to control all of this stuff. That's google.com slash voice slash m. And the thing about the mobile site is that it's easier to reply and to call people back. But it's a little bit more difficult to initiate a text or a call, in my opinion, because it does not auto-populate your contacts from Gmail. So if I go in here and I want to call my wife, and her name is Marie, I'm going to start typing out Marie, and nothing is coming back down. So if I really want to initiate that call or if I want to initiate that text, I've got to remember her phone number. Now, for my wife, yeah, I can remember my wife's phone number. I'm not going to share that on the internet. But for all of the other people in my contact book, my brain has become completely incapable of storing that much information in it anymore because I have these wonderful things like smartphones. So that's why I actually prefer going through the main desktop version of the site because that at least gets me to the rest of my contact book faster. I mean, you could maybe bookmark both the uh, mobile version of the site and the desktop version of the site for one is better for replying and one is better for initiating, but really I like going through one single interface. So I like texts and phone calls being sent to the phone like normal, and then I go to the desktop version online to be able to uh, reply or to initiate calls and texts. So folks, that's how we're going to have to get around the limitation of not having a proper Google Voice app for our Windows Phone devices. But thankfully, this problem is at least partially solved by having a slightly nicer web browser to go through using the Google Voice service. And for those of you out there subscribed to my channel, watching my videos, if you've got any tips or tricks that can help us continue to use this service on our Windows phones until we get some kind of Hangouts app, uh, I would definitely appreciate the discussion. Drop me some comments down below. Are there other shortcuts that you're using? Are you saving special phone numbers in your contacts to make dialing out easier? Because this is going to be a tricky transition for some of us who are trying to use our Windows phones but have gotten used to services like Google Voice. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, sharing my videos, subscribing to my channel, uh, hitting that thumbs up button, dropping me all those comments below. I've always loved the discussions that we get into down in the comments. And I will catch you all on the next video.